there off the tip of my finger. Just sitting there. I just caught them flying through the woods. Bald eagles are awesome. It's awesome seeing them out here all day. Hi everyone, messing with, I guess, some apps on my phone, messing with the looper pedal. Yeah, there's, you store a bunch of these. Store a bunch of these sounds on the 360, it's a good little pedal. Uh, well, I guess what I want to talk about today is let's get into some wood stuff. So here, here is a good, decent piece of wood. Now I took this out of, I'll show you in a minute what I took that out of and you'll be surprised because this is a good carvable piece of wood and it's in pretty good shape. Um, Ideally, the thing that I go for the most is a good, consistent color in the wood. You see, everything's the same color. I don't have don't have a lot of blue streaky stuff or miscolored stuff. I mean, every now and then, this is kind of this was in the wood. You know, it's in the core of the wood, the dark spot. But see, pretty much everything I have here. The wood's all the same color. How do I do that? I make sure that I, I get wood that's the same color when I pull it out of the lock. Now here's a, here's a nice pile here. It's important to store your stuff under cover or inside. Um, you can have it, like here we have you know, old old barn, old roof. Have it where the rain and the sun doesn't get to it a whole lot. This is a rained on, sun beaten piece. Uh, it's still good on the inside. It's going to be a little harder though. It's called, it's called hard casing when you when you weather treat them. What I like to do is get them in a stack outside and and cover them up with sheet metal or plywood get them up off the ground but for now everything's are moving so quick in the shop that I'm just throwing them here in the empty bay with my slab wood and a few extra carvings I have out there now here is some pine these are practice logs and why do I say practice logs because they are at that point where the bark is falling off they have grubs in them this is how the tree was sitting when it was cut the tree was living this way when it was cut so this is a diseased sick tree because here is what was a fairly healthy log but it, it got the blue stain in it there wasn't a lot of wasn't a lot of beetle. I mean there is, you see here in the veins. The bark was falling off when I brought it up here a little bit. This was earlier summer. But that wood right in the middle. I'm gonna use this to get a get a carving about that diameter. Now you can you can get good green wood. See this one here. This is a lot healthier log, but the problem is right there, when you leave them setting on the ground, they begin to develop problems. So see there, we're gonna clean this one down. This has smaller beetle holes in it, bug holes, Sawyer beetle. Uh, it's starting to get the stain in it. You wanna get rid of that, that's actual black mold, that's not good. Um, we just peel them, 
peeling down with the saw. See, I got a whole boneyard of peels here. You can see right there, lots of, see that mold just proliferates, especially under sawdust. I get about that size out of that log. If you leave them like that, the, the beetles and the bugs start to get in them as they get compost around them. So if you leave them on the ground, they're going to rot a lot quicker. And here's the leftovers of my last stash of pine. You see how bright and orange the end of that is, how sappy the, the bark is intact right it's mostly intact even back on that piece the bugs have started getting to it because it's been on the ground for all summer but that this is the most ideal pine when you get it fresh and green I have some pine back in here there's some big pine right here this is garbage i call this garbage wood this is good stash wood here it, it is sick um there are big holes in it from the Sawyer beetle. There's garbage wood. That's how many trees do you think are here in total? I see all these wood chips. Just everywhere. Just keeps going. Nice pine there for me to pick from. There's a nice piece there. I'm probably gonna probably gonna dig into this one. Why? Even though it's been it's been sitting here a while, I look at it and it looks like it's in fairly good shape. Even though it's been sitting here a while, it still looks pretty clean. It doesn't look like there's a lot of beetle activity going on. There's nice orange too, right under the bark. So I could probably get a few good pieces out of this one. There's a whole bunch of it here. Down underneath here, if I can, there's a nice piece right there too and that one, that one is sitting up off the ground completely laying on top of that other log. So it's been in, it's been keeping in really good shape uh, because that one right there is covered and it's up off the ground. The one next to it is still good too. Uh, up here in this pile too this is uh, I don't really need it because one two three four five there's a nice green piece well not green but clean looks like it's clean just by the color the bright orange that one looks healthy Beautiful fall day, sunny, very sunny. And we are looking at Mr. Bald Eagle out behind the shop. Just sitting right up there. Wow, so the two eagles were hanging out here today. There's a creek out back. I took you. He looks so big in front of me and then he looks like a little tiny dot on my screen. That's why it's hard for me to get him. Yeah, pretty awesome. Just stacked right up there. Egg salad. Pickles. Fried bologna. So we have here some pieces for inventory. I cut these a couple weeks ago. You see there, you see in here, right about there, there's where your standing stops. So you wanna cut all the wood down to this part. So you see that one there. Some of these are pretty core shot too. So when I really get into them, there might be a, a bad run in the middle. But see, nice orange wood. I like the nice orange wood. That carves really well. It cures really well. Most of the, most of the garbage, you want to get rid of all this because that's what's happening there in the sapwood. You see it here especially. This piece, all these came off of the same log here. Same, same group of logs. I think out of the same tree. Um, this is what's going to happen. 
to that little bit if I don't get rid of it soon. If I leave it out here with the bark on it in the weather, it's going to keep feeding that. So I had this up off the ground all summer, uh, but it, it was an older sick tree to begin with. There are some holes in it. All right, you see this cross section here of this piece. Now all of this, I want to get rid of pretty much all of that because that's already rot. It's already softwood. What's going to happen? Yeah, it's carvable, but you see this out of the same tree. That's about the size we're getting out of those. Um, I could carve this, but what's going to happen when that dries out? It's going to crack really bad. It's going to just be a pain to work with. So I say get rid of it. Stop feeding it. These guys down in front here, you see these guys, they, they have beetle holes in them. This is going to be practice wood or wood for turn it up, put things on it. Um, it's not real good for carving. It will crack a lot. It's been diseased. It's been uh, invaded by beetles. The, the excrement from the beetles is very acidic. It will actually cause a lot of splintering and drying and even cracking when the piece cracks. Uh, it all depends. It's, it's a lot of... Uh, like they say live and learn like uh, you know just keep keep trying and try to get the primo wood get some big blocks of junk wood and try to take the good wood out and that's how you learn is you peel that away so that's what we're going to do is peel this one away and see what we get now I already know I have about two inches on the other side that's been <laughs> that's been sitting this is the cross section see it looks fine out here but then you look there and you've got a lot of staining because this has been on the ground for a while um, so it's good to cut that cross section this is the open end I cut this probably three four weeks ago and left it sitting I wanted to see what happened um, <laughs> Personally, I'm really picky about my inventory wood that I put inside to dry. Uh, only because I've done enough of it. You saw I took out these little little pieces with the crap in them. You can leave those. Now you're gonna get runs like this. This is a heavy sap run. It's like I say, you can you can do what you want to do. Um, this is how I prefer it because I'm picky that way. I like a nice clean piece of wood. I like to get them in the drying racks and, and get them dry. I don't like to have to deal with any of this stuff once I'm inside the shop. It's sap wood. Um, this little, little light colored with the dark color. That dark color is getting into what's called the pith or the, the, uh, I guess it's where the phloem and the xylem. Phloem and xylem wood is tighter grain. It's a it's a more mature grain. It's what carries the nutrients as the tree is forming. It's uh, uh, the cellulose in that part of the wood for its new growth. But until that cellulose is totally formed in, in the more middle parts, and here, the orangey part, phloem and xylem, uh, that cellulose is formed and it's like a glue, it's like a bond, that's why there's less chance of crack. So, uh, as far as the saw goes, I've got a 325 pitch. The rakers are cut down a little bit. I actually cut the fronts off, I show a video where I do that. Uh, you could put 325 on an 025 and it will rip. I have a cannon bar this size with 325, which I run on these saws, and it's an absolute, I mean, it's a dream to carve with, 14, 16 inch bars. But also I've trimmed, trimmed the backs of the teeth down. This is short teeth. I use a crappy chain for doing this, and it's actually cutting kind of slow and rough, 
because the bar is beat up. Um, the teeth, actually, I, I hit some dirt doing this. So you want a chain that's gonna keep cutting for you. You see there, this dark stripe? That's actually dirt, I cut into dirt. Uh, you're gonna cut into dirt doing this, especially if you had logs laying on the ground, right? That's just dirt. Uh, typically, when I run into dirt, I try to come in, like, like if there's dirt here, a lot of it, even going around, I'll try to come in this way, and then maybe push through so that chain is going this way. If I cut up and all that dirt's on the outside, I'm pushing that dirt, I'm not really pulling a lot of it in, if that makes any sense. But because these are moving around, I'm short on time. I'm just trying to get her done. I prefer not to have a big knot in the middle of my carvings. When I process a lot my of the wood, and I will. I'll put the smaller knots down at the piece, end because the that could be the base of the carving. From the piece knots look good in the base of a carving, a but up in the carving, after it had been they burn different. The so they change the way you detail. See, here's and the shop. I want there's branches and knots at one end of the log. That'll be my base. Makes it easy. So there's a good example. There's two good examples there. Not sure if we have any here in this guy. Yeah, there's one. There's a branch knot. When I do, when I when I block them out, I do try to decide. I do try to choose the best section of wood to use. Um, and this is for smaller inventory. Inventory stuff. You want it to be clean. You want to rip right through it, not slow you down. Well... That'd be about it for uh, right now. Change some tunes here. Yeah, it was kind of cool, kind of chill. Love this too. Hey, I got, got my rack all organized. Everything piled up there. Took a while to clean up and organize things, get the sawdust out of here. <clears throat> yep, it's happening, guys. The winter's kicking in, falls over. Thanks for hanging, guys. It's uh, get cold and windy here, and when you see, we got the Got the snow, actually beautiful, beautiful colors up in the sky. Uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out, and uh, we'll continue on here.